So you've seen the cute animal videos and the satisfying shears, but what's it like to spend a day on the road with Right Choice Shearing? Up in the truck and let's go find out. Hey guys, I'm Katie, and this is my wife Darian, and together we make the team at Right Choice Shearing. We shear llamas, alpacas, and sheep, but our real passion is spreading knowledge about our industry. You never know what we'll find at the next job, but it's sure to be satisfying and definitely adorable. So join us while we travel nine states and help thousands of animals. Welcome to the party, we hope you stick around. Today we'll be servicing 38 different animals at nine different farms, and this is what our route looks like. We stayed at a friend's house and ended up being 30 minutes away from our first job. We start our day at a nice little place in Kempner, Texas. We'll be sharing six alpacas, five females, and one gelding. But first I've got to go back to the truck and get dressed and grab my tools. I grab my camera lid box and then I switch out my shoes. Darren and I both have work shoes and car shoes in order to keep the vehicle less dirty. But that means that we have to start and end every job by taking our shoes off and putting the other set on. We also wear coveralls in order to reduce the amount of dirt and hair that enters the vehicle with us. And if we get exceptionally dirty, we could switch them out for another pair easily. Then it's into the barn to set up my workspace. The client has already laid out a tarp so that we can collect the fiber and keep it from getting super dirty. I pull out my shears, oil to lubricate them, and two ropes. The ropes are to restrain the alpaca's legs. Alpacas tend to have a very anti disposition, which means that they can dance around and jump and kick and lay down while we're trying to shear them. So we pick them up and lay them down and gently restrain them so that they can't get hurt or hurt us with the shears. Unlike llamas, alpacas have fiber from the tips of their toes all the way to their top knot. So we really want to make sure that there's no kicking or dancing or moving around when we're messing with their legs or up by their face. Darian creates a triangle with her toe knee and heel so that there's plenty of room for the alpaca's neck underneath so that it's not squished against the ground but so that they can't lift it up we shear between their legs we gently pull them snug but not over tight so as to injure them she's got plenty of room to wiggle and if she wanted to fight she could but she doesn't because we're not hurting her now it's off with that blanket this client in particular keeps the fiber so that she can use it and spin it into products like yarn, so it's important to keep as many second cuts as possible out of it. Those can ball up in the spinning process and cause nothing but problems for the processor of the wool. The first part I removed, or the blanket, is the body of the animal and has the highest quality fiber, that's known as first, or the blanket. The rest of the body is considered to be second or lesser quality fiber, except for the legs, which we would call thirds. The blanket would be used for like clothing, whereas the seconds would be more of a blanket and the thirds would be kind of a rug type. Shaping the top knot in the tail or the legs is all owner preference and to get rid of the felted tips that collect on them. Now we've gotten to the end and it's time to untie her and let her up so that she can go enjoy the pasture. It's a bit slick, but once she's up, we sweep the floor to remove the lower quality fibers and prevent them from contaminating the good stuff we take off. We also clean it really well between color changes of animals. Now we just have to do it five more times and we're done. Everything is running really smooth and the blankets that we are taking off are absolutely gorgeous. But as I move through the third one, my blades begin to get pretty dull. So after her, it's time to change them. It's off with the old and on with the new. The bottom part is called the comb, while the top part is called the cutter. I sharpen my own so there's always plenty on hand when I need them. We're about halfway through now and rocking and rolling. This place is coming off like butter, and honestly, it's not bad to look at either. This has been a great way to start the day. Everyone so far has been a total angel and we've gotten some beautiful fleece. But as you can imagine, there's always that one. And today, it's Jasmine. She was not excited about her haircut or being on camera that day. But she was the end of the first job of the day and it was time to pack up. But of course we could not leave the barn without giving out some treats. Then it's back to the truck to de-robe and pack up all of our stuff. Sometimes it seems like getting set up and taking down is the longest part of a job, especially if there's only one or two animals. We check out our work on the way out and Darian begins entering information into our books while I drive. A short 20 minute drive to the next job where I will be shearing five pair sheep. The sheep should shed, but for some reason they won't lose their winter coat, so I'm here to help out. I unload the sheep box and roll my coveralls into a form of pants to protect my legs but free up the movement in my arms. Then it's off to set up my workplace. I hang a motor from above my head and work on a plywood floor for safety. I oil and attach my shaft and then start working on my handpiece. 
I attach my ferrule, which is the tube that protects the connection point from my shaft to my shears. I put on my leather shearing moccasins and a stretchy belt to help keep up my pseudo pants. They do make specialized shearing pants, but for me they're too hard to get on and off and more sweaty. At smaller jobs, Darian will bring the sheep to me and I will shear them. We do this because there's two of us and there's no need for one of us to waste the energy catching and shearing them. Hair sheep are not used in fiber production. In fact, they're strictly meat. They should shed their winter coat just like a dog would, but some don't. And thousands of years ago, when we started domesticating sheep, we bred those together, the ones that wouldn't shed, to create wool sheep. But now this trait is extremely undesirable in meat sheep. Hair sheep that don't shed should not be used in breeding groups because they're only going to pass that trait along, and it's more maintenance than it's worth. All of that stuff that I'm taking off is worthless. There's not enough quality to sell it to anybody, but you have to pay for the shearing anyways, making it all cost and zero return. They're also very hard to keep comfortable while shearing, making it very hazardous for both of us. After I finish up, I change back out of my coveralls and hop back in the truck after about 40 minutes of work. In the 15 minute drive, Darian inputs all the information from that job, and I just take in the scenery, including this little bridge that we get to cross. We arrive at our third job at 11.30 and drive back through their vineyard to get to the little barn where their sheep are. We'll be shearing eight baby dolls, but first I need to change my blades. I loosen the tension knob which presses the cutter against the comb, and then I clean off all of the lanolin that's built up on my comb to make it easier to clean later. Then I put my cutter on, line up my comb perfectly, tighten it down, and I'm ready to go. I oil the connection inside of my ferrule, and I turn back my counter to zero. I hang that somewhere where I can conveniently reach it, and I'm ready to get started. These guys live on the vineyard because they're really good at eating all the weeds, but not being able to reach the grapes at the top. These owners do not utilize the fleece, so this is just to keep the sheep cool for the summer. These guys are also very dirty, and they have a lot of vegetable matter, which is like dirt and debris, and very hard to clean out of a fleece, or at least very time consuming. So you might not want to make it into yarn, but it could be used for crafting, felting, maybe even erosion control or compost. These guys were extremely good for shearing. It went really smooth at this job. And before I knew it, it was time to undress and pack up. But of course we couldn't leave before Darian smashed her phone in the tailgate. Honestly, nobody's gonna be able to tell. After about an hour and 15 minutes worth of work, we cross that bridge and are back on the road. Again, Darian's entering information. Well, I try to focus on what the GPS is telling me. It takes me to an extremely long driveway at job number four. At the end of that driveway, we found a peacock and a horribly overgrown llama. This is red hot and we had no idea that he hadn't been shorn in six years. It ended up taking both of us to halter him because he was a little worked up, but he calmed right down after we had him tied to the fence. It truly blows my mind how heavy these mats are. Llama should be shorn once a year, especially down here in the Texas heat. So I cannot imagine how hard it's been for him to stay cool during these high temperatures trying to carry around all of those mats. Notice that I'm holding the weight of the mats up so it does not pull on the skin and create a tension wrinkle. If the mats pull, it tense the skin and that is a perfect way to nick them because it fits all too well in the spaces between the teeth on my comb. Also to help combat that, I tilt my clippers so that they're not flat against the skin but one side is lifted up so that I don't catch that wrinkle easily. The weight of the mats on his skin must not be bothering him too much because he stands perfectly for me. In fact, I think that he can tell that I'm helping. Red Hot is not halter broken and he is not often handled by humans, so it must be the feel of the wind on his skin that keeps him so still. I take my time and finish up by smoothing out all the ridges over his body and flooping his tail. The whole thing took me about 12 minutes and he's a brand new llama. If you're interested in the real-time video, subscribe so you'll know when I post it. But until then, check out how enormous these mats are. That's probably 30 pounds. Now undress and let's hop back in the car after about a 30 minute appointment. We try our best to answer communications with clients during our 15 minute drive to the next place and write down the last job. But it goes by fast and we're at our fifth job of the day. Two llamas named Coco and Gary. We get a little goat escort to the back pens, and I'm not gonna lie, they kinda were micromanagers. While I change my blades and prepare to start the job, I notice something on Coco. The bottom of his legs have not been shorn. 
This is a sign that he'll be very nervous when I get down to his legs, and he was exactly that way. In combat, llamas fight by biting each other's legs, so I know that I have to take my time and really build his trust to get it done, but it'll be worth it in the end. And if we continue to just leave it there, it'll only match. Gary, on the other hand, was freaking amazing. He stood there perfectly as we peeled back all that beautiful fiber to reveal those breathtaking paint markings. Gary and Coco were an absolute joy to share, and if you guys would like, I can post the real-time videos of these guys too. But all good things must come to an end, and when we're done, those boys are ready to be back out and in that water. Speaking of water, our clients had some there for us too, and the Dr. Pepper. On our way out, we got to witness Gary and his afternoon trip to the poop pile. We were running early, so we had time to stop for a lunch. The sandwiches were great, but the views on the way to the next job were even better. We're driving through Texas Hill Country now. It's 3.30 p.m. by the time that we arrived to Dolly's house. I've been sharing this beautiful guard llama for several years now, but she still watches carefully as Darian sets everything up to make sure she's doing it right. Dolly comes out with no problems and walks right to the fence for us to shear her. She's not handled her halter often, but stands perfectly still for us to give her this shear. She was not this cooperative the first year we were out, but quickly learned that we're just here to help. I only see these animals for about 15 minutes once a year, and they retain all that information. So it's super important that every experience is just as good as the one before. This client has also asked me to shear some of the tops of her non-shedding sheep. So while Darian finishes up with Dolly, I set up for the sheep. When Darian joins me, we get to rock and roll in and finish these sheep up pretty dang quick. They then asked me really nicely to let her out while she gave me the side eye from the barn. Once released, she led them in all of their naked glory right out to pasture. Dolly and her sheep only took about an hour and we were back on the road to the next place. We were thankful for a bit longer of a drive this time, so we were able to catch up on some of the work that we weren't able to get to on the shorter drives that morning. Now there's only three jobs left, but by the time that we get to job number seven, it's almost five o'clock and already 96 degrees. Tony and Rico are father and son and ready for their haircut. We've been cheering these guys for several years, so it takes no time for us to set up and get ready to get these boys naked. We shear the son Tony first, and he knows exactly what the drill is. It's quick to halter him and get him tied to the post, and then it's off to trimming his nails. Remembering how llamas fight each other, it is absolutely an honor that he stands this still and trusts us while we mess with his legs. As that beautiful fiber peels off, you know that he has to feel so much better. He shows his gratitude by being an absolute champ and setting an example for his dad to follow. We find that in groups of llamas, if the llama that goes first is very calm, it tends to affect the attitude and energy of the second one. And because Tony did so well, his dad's already relaxed and not worked up. Their behavior today is a complete 180 from the first time we were out. They used to stomp and kick at us, but now they don't even move a muscle while we relieve them of that heat for the summer. But of course, they're happy when we're all done and don't waste any time finding some comfort food. After just 35 minutes, we're loaded back up and headed out the gate. It's another super short drive, so we try to cram as much as we can with communicating to clients and writing down our books before we hit this really bumpy, long gravel road. Now that we're officially back in the sticks, we find our eighth job of the day. Here we find two alpacas. Josie and Winston, and <laughs> what a face is that. A quick blade change before I get started on Winston. He's a beautiful 10 year old male with gorgeous fiber. So we start by rolling off his blanket. But Josie on the other hand is 20 years old and her fleece is a lot lower quality. Her owners are going to just process it all together and turn it into dryer balls. And if that's the case, there's no need to take the blanket off perfectly or first. So instead, I just shear one whole side of her body and then roll her over to do the next side. The oldest alpaca I've ever shorn was 25 years old, and I did that before I even turned 20. Josie is definitely an old pro at this, and we're done before you know it. Then she and Winston are ready to go back out into the pasture and enjoy their new summer dews. And I'm ready for that emergency Dr. Pepper I stashed. We enjoy that and some watermelon after we get back into the car. 30 minutes and we're out of there. One more drive to the last place of the day, and this time it's in a neighborhood setting. It's 6.40 when we pull up to the last job of the day, job number 9, where we meet Rocky, a new llama. We change clothes and coveralls for the last time today and go to set up. This will be Rocky's first haircut at one year of age, so we be sure to keep our energy low so that he's calm and has an excellent first time experience. He's a little nervous and trying to figure out what's going on 
and plus this is the first time that he's ever been haltered and tied and made to stand still. So all of this is a new experience for him, but if we do a good job and he stays calm the entire time, this builds an excellent foundation for the shearings to come in the future. Once he figures out that pulling on the halter isn't going to get him anywhere and that we're not there to hurt him and that he actually feels better, Rocky relaxes and pretty much lets us do it with no problem at all. You never know how the first time is going to go, but honestly, this is the best possible scenario. Not to mention that I'm having a blast because Rocky's owners asked me if I could leave a mullet, and we all know that I cannot pass one of those up. So since she's been such a good boy for me, I arranged a little party in the back. And honestly, with his confidence, he totally owns it. If this guy was a little bit older, I'd say get him a natty light and find this dude a crawfish boil. When we're done, Darian packs up under the supervision of Rocky's best friend before he goes and checks out that new haircut. And we're done! Pack up for the last time! We were only there for 20 minutes and it's back in the truck and hit the road to go home. It's a two hour drive! And while Darian enters the last of the information for the day, I look out for a grocery store. We need to pick up some bananas for breakfast and something to cook for dinner. Asparagus and salmon cooks quickly, so we grab a lemon to go with it. Thankfully, I noticed that I look like a tool bag with my glasses on, so I changed that before I grabbed the sushi. Darian gets sidetracked by some pretty looking cups, and somehow we end up with two of them. Piece of her balance and some watermelons for snacks. We check out quickly so I can get in the car and stuff my face with some sushi. Two hours drag by, but we make it back to the ranch at 9.30. After a 14 hour day, it's time to cook, clean, and get prepared for tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out with us, and if you enjoyed today, make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next adventure. And if you want some more daily content, check us out on Instagram and TikTok, at Right Choice Shearing, of course.